Gojo 1962 here, and today I want to bring you all a retrospective on Doom Eternal on its second year anniversary. I want to clarify that this video will not be focusing on the main campaign. My first video, Doom Eternal one year later, is focused on that with some talk of the DLC. So if you want to know my thoughts on the main campaign, go watch that video. Now, let's get into everything I didn't cover before, and of course, spoilers for all of Doom Eternal, so don't say I didn't warn you. First off, Battle Mode. Battle Mode is a multiplayer mode in which one Doom Slayer has to fight against two demons. Let's get into what is most likely a lot of people's favorite team, the demons. There's a decent range of demons that the player can choose to play as, these demons being the Mancubus, Revenant, Pain Elemental, Archvile, and Dread Knight, and the Marauder. Each demon has their own abilities that cater to what they do. For example, the Marauder uses his shotgun and can summon his wolf. Battle Mode has had multiple updates over the past two years including a revamp of the mode, renaming it to Battle Mode 2.0. I personally don't despise it, be it, but just don't really much care for it. You see, I it, it's not bad, it's just... I, I've had plenty of fun playing it, don't get me wrong, I've had plenty of fun playing with my friends. But when I get... I when I play it by myself, I get bored super easily, I just want to play the campaign again. There's nothing against Battle Mode, Nothing against it for making it, I mean, more effort to them, more pops to them. They decided to try something new instead of repeating something old. But to be honest, like everyone else, I would have had rather had a team deathmatch or just deathmatch in general instead of battle mode. Because I like battle mode. It's not bad. I love that aspect of two demons versus one slayer. I especially love being able to play as my favorite demons, like the arch vial. But it's just, it's not really for me. I, I've put way, like I, I'd easily replay Doom 2016's multiplayer a lot more than this. And the only reason I kept coming back to this mode was because I played it with my friends. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't play this at all. Now although I don't care for battle mode, the rest of the topics I'll talk about I actually really like. For example, master levels. Master levels are a revamped version of already exciting level from the main campaign, and the DLC. Master levels have gone through an amazing change over time. From the start, they were simply just putting harder and different demons in spawn areas that they weren't in before, to, do not, to doing that and more. There's, that's not to say that they were bad, but the newer ones are a massive step up. For example, not only do they change demon spawn rates, but they add power-ups, add items like turrets and lasers to kill you, we make already existing arenas and a newer and harder versions, and much more. I love Master Levels, and what they have become with the levels being some of my most played content in Doom Eternal. Master Levels have quickly become a fan favorite, and many like myself are hoping that id will make more and make Master Levels based on every miss in the campaign and the DLC. I have nothing but praise for these levels and hope there are more, and luckily for me, there have been leaks about more coming to the game, and I couldn't be happier. I won't spoil for you what the levels are, so I would recommend going out and looking for them yourself. Unless you want to be surprised, then don't do that at all. But with all these positives, there has to be some negatives, right? Well, yes, actually. But I can think of only one, that being the difficulty of the levels. Now, I know the levels being difficult is the main point, and I love it. But I believe that difficulty can impact the average player. For example, my friend. He doesn't play Doom Eternal as much as me. But when he played the Master Levels, he struggled a lot. And they were so hard for him that he was stuck on just one of the arenas for hours. Now, of course, there's nothing against him. But I believe that is something to take into account. And that even though people like me, who pour countless hours into Doom Eternal, love these levels. And can beat them with ease. Or at least, semi-ease. Others who don't really play it that much, it can impact the game, or just in general how they feel about it. So my friend Gavin, for example, these levels can be extremely hard for him, and can even lead to burnout. Other than that, I believe master levels are some of, if not the best content in Doom Eternal, possibly even all of Doom. Seeing as they change up the combat style, possibly your even way of playing the game with mods and runes, it adds a lot of unique combat and gameplay and gameplay revalue, like playing it again and again and again, coming back to it, it adds so much to the game. Even though they're just simple, just new spawns and new power-ups and stuff, it just adds a lot to the game. It's something 
that I hope will continue to come into newer and newer Doom games from now on. And if it doesn't, hey, at least we got them with Doom Eternal. And on top of that, we got a decent amount. We got about, what, I believe like six or eight of them so far? So that is not bad at all. And one of them is even of the DLC. So, yeah, I hope it, it makes more. I would gladly appreciate it, and I would love them for it. And I'm still the community would gladly take it as well. Seeing as Doom Eternal has basically made all the main content I wanted to, being the DLC, Battle Mode 2.0, and Horde Mode, and unfortunately Invasion being cancelled, which I would have loved, and me and my friends were extremely excited for. Horde Mode, I mean, sorry, Master Levels, are extremely fun. And I hope we get more of them. And if we don't, that's okay. At least we got some while we did. And who knows, since Doom Eternal is on PC, maybe people can make custom Master Levels. Or release the unreleased Master Levels, who knows. Possibilities are endless. And I couldn't be happier with what it has gave us. Designed to break you, heretic. I've studied your tactics, your talents. Ah, nothing but the mindless rage of a beast. You will fail, and the demons of this dark arena will devour your soul. Master levels have been in the game since launch, but there's something that wasn't in the game at launch, and was highly anticipated and highly asked for. That being Horde Mode. This mode is an arena based mode where you progressively beat arenas to get that get harder. These arenas have different challenges, and to mix it up you start with only your combat shotgun. You earn the rest of your arsenal over time, and there's even new cutscenes. You earn points for killing demons and doing challenges, and the more points you earn the higher you'll be on the leaderboard. This mode is a lot of fun, and I enjoy the challenge of it. What makes it even more special is that you can earn rewards the more you play. For example, you can earn a skin of the Doom Slayer that is a remake of the two Doom 2 design. But if that isn't your style for whatever reason, then you can earn a bike outfit for the Slayer. With countless other rewards to earn. This mode has plenty of waves to go through. And since you go through three levels, the replay value is pretty high. The arenas were actually slightly changed after some time. Not all of them, only some. But the changes are so small you wouldn't realize it, and it's not worth bringing them up here. Horde mode is a lot of fun. And I can see why it was so highly desired amongst the community. If you ever wanted a horde based mode in Doom, yeah, just in Doom in general, this is for you. From the new challenges, demon placements, and having to earn your arsenal, this mode is easily a fan favorite. And I can see why. Especially from the gameplay you see here, you gotta earn your lives. As you can see, I have 13. There's different waves, get the score at the top right. In the lot of demons are with different points, like the bigger ones are more points, smaller ones less points. You can get score, score multipliers, which deal extra damage. It's, it's a lot of fun. And that's all I have to say for Horde Mode. Because as of right now, there's been no major updates and no major changes to Horde Mode. Other than if you, other than if you want to count them, there's very, very small changes made. That some of them, like, from what I know, the changes are so small, it's, it's not worth bringing up here. They're just demon placements. But, yeah, other than that, I'm, I really enjoy it, and I'm really happy it came to the game. And like I said, there's no major updates and no major changes so far to Horde Mode, so we only have what's in the game right now. But even what we have, it's really good. And if you haven't played it yet, and you own the game, I highly recommend it. Okay, so now let's get into a new section. If you don't know, my friend Gavin has a YouTube channel. His YouTube channel being Gmeister. And there'll be a link down in the description. He does Twitch now, but before that, and even not during the start of it, we did a live stream series for Doom Eternal. I was the co-host, and we had a lot of fun. It's personally one of my favorite things I've done. And it was a thoroughly enjoyable time. If you want to, you can go to Gavin's channel in the link description and go to a playlist which shows like all the live streams it did and we're planning on doing at least a few more, at least a handful of more don't know when, but we're planning to do that well, I'm personally planning the next one to be battle mode, but who knows but we had a lot of fun it went on for 
over, I believe it was over a year, and it was, I had a lot of fun, very enjoyable, one of my favorite things I've done, and thoroughly enjoyed it. So I wanted to bring my friend Gavin on here so he can get his thoughts on Doom Eternal, because, well, might as well, since Doom Eternal is, like, one of my favorite series he's done, especially because I was a co-host, I want to bring him on here, let him explain his thoughts on the game, and then we'll get back to the basics, we'll get back to the normal video. If you want, I'll leave a timestamps and the description of different sections, so if you want to skip this and get back to the meat, you can, but I recommend watching it, okay? I recommend watching it and hearing his thoughts, because like I said, doing to all the live streams we did were very special to me, and I really enjoyed them. So if you could at least hear my friend's thoughts on them, because if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be able to do the series. Um, I, at least hear him out, okay? But if you don't want to, like I said, there's time to answer in the description. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? It's G-Meister here, and I'm here to give you a brief little segment of this in this Doom Eternal two years later video. Uh, because, you know, Chris wanted to include me, and I appreciate him. And that's awesome, because recently, uh, for like, well, it, it was like almost a year, but it was very inconsistent. But like, we got very consistent around like September, October-ish, and then we did it like weekly, on and on and on. From like, the end of the campaign, to, uh, when we returned things to Master Levels after, uh, freaking... Ancient gods. Uh, I'm here to talk about Doom Eternal and my personal feelings and experiences with the game, uh, how I feel about it. Um, you know, Chris has talked a lot about the game, you know, whether it be on stream with me or in his one year later video, which we constantly reference in our streams, or freaking, uh, you know, the video you're watching right now. Um, and it's his favorite game of all time. And so, to get to play that game with him live every week, you know, hear his thoughts and like each level and each gameplay mechanic and watch me improve and give me tips and, you know, watch him play and have him even come on in person sitting next to me in that chair right there. It was a blast, honestly. Uh, it's actually one of my, probably one of my favorite color streams I've done. Um, and like, it, it was, it was fun. It was so freaking fun. The gameplay itself was actually really, really good. Now, first person shooters aren't normally my particularly favorite genre uh, to play. I know, shocker. But, you know, I play like some Borderlands, I, I play uh, Call of Duty, Black Ops Zombies, from like War, War Zombies to like BO4, and that's my cutoff. That's my cutoff right there. I, I don't go further than that. I don't go to the Cold War of your vanguard. That's scary. That's too scary for me. Um, but, but my, my point is, um, you know, fur person shooters aren't my particular niche, not my genre. I go out of my way to play. But, you know, I made an exception with uh, Doom Eternal because it's my friend's favorite game of all time. And at the time, it was a heavily requested stream series. Um, so we got together, streamed every week for a bit. It was really fun, like I said. Like the gameplay was addicting, it had such an interesting gameplay loop. The one thing I, I actually genuinely was impressed by with the game, uh, was actually the move, the, like the mobility and the movement system of the game, between like the dashing, the climbing, and everything like that. The environmental puzzles, and honestly, that, that was probably some of my favorite parts of the game, to be honest. Like, I've never felt mobility like that in a shooter like that. Maybe said from something like, I don't know, Titanfall's like wall running or something. But, like, it was distinct. It was kind of its own thing. I, I've never played anything like it. And I, I think that's definitely in that game's favor. Um, for sure. Honestly, it was, it's a big highlight. It's a big standout. Um... Also, the gunplay itself. The gunplay was actually very good. Like, the gun balance, you know? Like, how you have two of, e two of each gun that take the same ammo types, like the auto shotgun, the double barrel, and everything like that. Uh, and like, the different weapon mods as well. I didn't really start experimenting with weapon mods to, like, ancient gods and shit like that, and I kind of regret that. Like, if you're going to play the game for the first time, experiment. 
fucking experiment. This game is all about customization, whether it be with the runes or the weapon mods or just which guns you prefer to use in general. Honestly, like, that's a big regret I have while playing the game on stream. But, like, experiment. Honestly, personalize it. it personalize the channel or your gameplay to how you play. But don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone a little bit to try, like, I don't know, uh, fucking instead of, um, the laser on the plasma cannon, try, try the other mod, or freaking, freaking, I don't know, try, like, the auto on the auto shotgun, or instead of, like, launcher, though, actually, that, that's actually one of the ones that actually would, like, vary depending on, like, enemy type, to be honest with you, um, but that's good, too, this game also had amazing variety in enemy types, by the way, that actually made me think, like, every different, like, arena with a puzzle I had to solve. And I think that that's a blast. Like, no matter how many times I whack my head against a brick wall of a puzzle in, like, a, in each level, I, I'm always feeling like, wow, that felt good to, that felt good to conquer. That felt good to, you know, complete and beat, you know? Um, and I also had Chris there as well, giving some great commentary and giving me some conversation topics. And him and I basically podcasted the hell out of our playthrough, no cap. Like, we, we just talked and talked and talked, and honestly, it was some, there were some pretty raw conversations in there that I will always look back upon fondly. And I want to thank him, you know, him editing the video right now. By the way, Chris, uh, you see this green screen? Edit whatever you want back there, right now. Beautiful. That looks great. Wow, where'd you find that? Anyways, uh, you, editing the video, thank you for giving me your time every week. Thank you for playing the game with me. Thank you for introducing the game to me, helping me learn, guide me, and just being a great co-host, honestly. Uh, maybe we'll play some more Doom Eternal in the future, uh, but I don't know when. But look forward to it whenever we do. And yeah. I can't say it's my favorite game of all time like Chris, but I can say it's definitely one of my favorite experiences that I've had streaming on the channel every single time. And I've streamed a lot of games. It's definitely up there, you know? It's, it's kind of, it's, it might be somewhere up there with this guy right here, just being great. Um, yeah, honestly, it's just, it was just fun. And that's kind of it. Have peace out, Maestro. Enjoy the rest of the video. It was, it's a great game. I loved it, and I love streaming with Chris. Check out our old VODs on my YouTube channel and everything like that. All right, back to you, Gojira. <laughs>for the last major talking point let's get into the DLC. I briefly covered the DLC in my last Doom Eternal anniversary video in which I looked back on Doom Eternal for its one year anniversary, but I wanted to expand my opinion on the DLC now that I have had a lot of time with it. Let's start with Ancient Gods Part 1. Ancient Gods Part 1 is a great start to the DLC. It's challenging, it has great arenas, and the story expands upon the main campaign. After killing the Icon of Sin, the Slayer must now go and finish this all off where it started by killing the Dark Lord. I love this premise, and I believe it's executed in a great way. In the first DLC, you have to find the Seraphim and awaken the Father so you can stop the demonic invasion. But after going through some trials, the Slayer instead destroys the only way for the Father to come back, instead choosing to awaken the Dark Lord so you can finish everything off by killing the one who started it all. So in the second DLC, you continue as a slayer on your journey to kill the Dark Lord. 
I believe that it's great and that it did this in uh, the Doom Eternal instead of a new game. Doom Eternal's comment and gameplay are so fluent and perfect that it's better to do it in this game instead of a new one. And it helps that the story from the main campaign led neatly into the DLC. Instead of making a whole new game, we got it now, and it was executed perfectly, and it opened the door of possibilities wide open. Now yes, I get this opinion base and that I believe it was executed perfectly, but I really do. It's just that Doom Eternal is made in such a way that the combat, the mechanics, the wounds, everything to it, the enemies, the playstyle, I couldn't expect it in a new Doom game. Like, I couldn't expect Find the Dark Lord in a different combat style, different gameplay, anything like that. I believe it had to be executed now. And if it wasn't, well, I would gladly wait. Yeah, of course. It's just, I want to see how it would have been executed then. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I know the Dark Lord is joked about by being just a Marauder, but bigger. But they had little time. They, ha they had a deadline. And they had many ideas, too. It's not like they always wanted him to be in the suit. They had ideas of him getting out of the suit and fighting. Which I would have absolutely loved. But... The thing is, I'm happy with what we got. And with the deadline they had to make two DLCs this great and still pump out content for the main game is insane that they did it. And I'm incredibly happy with it. The cinematics are great. I constantly go back to watch them. I always feel something, like a sense, in that when I watch the cinematics, that this is the end of Doom. And that this is what Doom has been building up to and what it's been for. And I absolutely love it. I, I, I'll get into this more later in the video, but I can't wait to see the future of Doom. can't wait to see the future of where it's going to go. And, personally, I, I just can't wait. From the story, the gameplay, the new weapons, everything new. This DLC is amazing to me. And of course, in this DLC, you face off against new demons, and like I said, the new weapon, and just face off against the Dark Lord. I constantly come back to this DLC, and it's just in general fun to me. Constantly come back to it because the intense fights and just overall, it's just a lot of fun. I am extremely happy with this ending, Doom Eternal. And like I said, if wanted it to do it, like if it wanted to do this, just Doom in general. I am super happy with this, and I'm basically at a lack of words because I just believe. This should be the definitive end to Doom. Now, yes, I do believe there can be more stories to tell, which I'll talk about after this. But I believe, like I said before, if they wanted to end it now, they could. I really enjoyed the Dark Lord boss fight as well. Is it just a glorified Moada? Yes, which makes it extremely easy. And yes, I would have liked more like him coming out of the armor or whatever. But regardless, it's great. The Dark Lord is a great enemy. He is the counter to the Doom Slayer. Well, Doom Guy, you know, he protects Earth and kills the demons and defeats Hell and all that stuff. The Dark Lord is the conqueror of Hell, who's causing all of this. And that he looks just like Doom Guy is perfect. He's basically fighting himself. And. What's more powerful than Doom Guy? Well, an evil Doom Guy. And it just so happens this evil Doom Guy. Well, of course he's not Doom Guy himself, it's the Dark Lord, but it just so happens that Doom Guy is facing off a quote unquote evil version of himself. And this evil version conquers hell, something he's been fighting so long against. I love this. The dynamic between the two is amazing. And the cuss scenes in the Dark Lord boss fight, I, I constantly watch them over and over. Just because of how good they are. Dude, I would give so much fucking money to see them just, just to get a fucking lore movie. Like, it is so good. And I can't wait to see what's next. Of course, like I said, I'll talk more about the future of the franchise in the next bit. But, to say right now, I just... I love what was executed. I love how it was executed. I'm just more general at a loss for words because I'm extremely happy with it. I'm extremely with ha happy with how far Doom has come and how Doom Eternal has progressed the fan size. I believe this is the peak of Doom and it's up to it if we're gonna go down or 
higher from here. I personally believe we'll go higher from here, but I don't know what they're going to do to top the Dark Lord being killed off once and for all. But I'm excited. I'm open for new possibilities. So let's get into that. Let's get into those new possibilities and what I personally believe will happen for the future of this franchise, for the future of Doom, for the future of the father of gaming. So with all that being said, where do I believe Doom is going next? Well, it's quite simple. The multiverse. I believe either in the next Doom game or a bigger game, eventually we will get into the multiverse. In Wolfenstein Youngblood, we hear about how the multiverse is real, and different realities exist. So what does this mean for Doom? Well, if you don't know, it's confirmed that every skin in the game is canon to its own reality. What does that mean? Well, for example, let's look at the Doomicorn skin. At first glance, it's just a funny unicorn uniform for the Doom guy. But in the canon, the skin takes place in its own reality, where the Slayer wears that. This goes for every skin in the game. So if you look back at all of them, one stands out in particular to me that I believe should get more attention. The Crake Ranger skin. Although being a fun uh, nod to a great series, the semi c uh, confirms that Quake and Doom share the same universe. And that everyone, I believe, believe that anyways, but still. Or at, or at least the same multiverse. Even if you look at the family tree for the Doom guy, guess who is at the top? None other than BJ himself, the main protagonist of Wolfenstein. But there's someone else who is important there. That being Commander Keen. And guess what? He has a skin in Doom Eternal now. I, I may be sounding a bit crazy here, but just think of it. The next Doom game opens up with BJ Blazkowicz, opening the Doom Guy's tomb. Doom Guy awakens as BJ helps him out of the tomb, then BJ uses a portal gun to a new dimension. The Doom Guy looks at BJ, BJ's face, then realizes that he's looking at his great-grandfather. I could go on and on and honestly let me know if I shouldn't make a video based on talking about how a game like that could work. But the idea alone sells it for me as an official crossover between Doom, Wolfenstein, and Quake. The three big, the, the big three ga um, games of the FPS genre. The big, the big, look, I don't know how to put it. But just imagine, it's like Avengers Endgame levels. It's insane. But just... The big three of the FPS genre were finally coming together. I just hope the rumored next id game is actually a Quake game. So not only could we finally get a proper new Quake game, but hopefully in the style of Doom 2016. I don't know, it's just some ideas I had. So what else do I have to say? Well honestly, a big thanks to id Software and everyone who works there. Thanks to you, we not only got my favorite game ever, Doom Eternal, but the best game franchise ever, Doom. I grew up on FPS games and stuck to Call of Duty because of the campaign and zombies. I have played many FPS games over the years, that being because it's my favorite genre out there. But something changed when I played Doom 2016. It was different, but in the good way. The combat, gameplay, story, uh, just is all so good. Not to mention how badass the Slayer is. So I was pumped for the sequel and when QuakeCon came around, I couldn't be happier. And of course when the game released, it quickly became my favorite game ever. At first I was unsure how I felt about it, but after a week I couldn't put down my controller and just played it constantly. I remember my first time playing Doom back on PC, but the hardware I was running was so weak I could barely play the game, so I stopped playing. But years later I replayed it and thoroughly enjoyed it. Which Doom was this? Well the original of course. So years later for Doom to be my favorite game franchise is just amazing. Especially because my father played the original Doom and Quake back in the day, and our son not only played them as well, but loves them. I found it to be amazing, and just want to thank everyone at id Software for this amazing journey I'll continue to stick with. From playing on a weak PC, barely able to get 5 frames a second, to my PS4 playing it constantly and not putting it down, I couldn't be happier. Like, for God's sakes, I play this game so much I put in over, over a thousand hours into it. And it's for a thousand more. Because I, I love this game. But thank you all so much for watching this video. It's been a passion of mine for a while to make this. And I hope you all enjoyed it. If you do, I will gladly take any constructive criticism or feedback or anything you have down in the comments below. Let me know if you liked it or not. And let me know how I can improve. Honestly, it helps out the channel a lot. And I take the constructive criticism and, uh, you know, 
play when I make other videos. Also, this, this, uh, <laughs> I'm watching the footage right now while I'm talking. This possessed uh, Hell Knight really kicked my ass. Holy crap. That's what not playing Doom Eternal for a while does to you. You gotta get used to it again. But, um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have any constructive criticism or anything, please let me know. Because I will gladly take it and make my videos better. So thanks for all uh, watch, thanks to all of you for watching this. Thanks to It Software for making this amazing game and amazing fan size. And with nothing else to say, Gorgio and 62 signing off.